Okay, thanks, Helen. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Raymond. Again, I'd like to say welcome to our webinar and thanks again for uh, taking the time out of your day. I'm sure you've had plenty of webinars coming your way with uh, the current situation. So uh, I'm the regional sales manager at SWEP. Uh, and I'm just going to be doing a brief introduction for you today, just going over the uh, agenda for the presentation before handing over to Greg. Uh, so I'm going to give you an introduction to SSP and give you some background on how the software has been developed. I think that's really important for you to understand what drives the results that you're getting uh, when you do a calculation. And, and how that uh, you know can impact your your project and your your end sort of uh, uh, installation. I'm going to show you the two different versions of SSP that we currently have. We have a desktop based version, which is currently only for Windows PC. Uh, so this is installed on, on your machine. We also have a web based version that some of you might have been using or are currently using. We've actually updated that, so I'm going to show you that today, and I think you'll be really pleased uh, with, with the new functionality we've got. It's very, very similar to the desktop version. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you the evolution of SSP and where it all began. So we started uh, as a company developing SSP as a solution for our customers and, and for also for internal people, our internal colleagues, to make accurate and quick selections to choose the right heat exchanger for the right application. Uh, it started off as a very simple DOS-based program. Uh, I'm told it was very quick and easy to use. It obviously developed with the times uh, and we've evolved over the years to where we are now with SSP uh, G8. It's all developed entirely in-house at SWEP. We use our heat transfer research group to carry out a lot of the uh, core development of the software. We feed that into the software engineers, coordinating with uh, our colleagues in application management at SWEP. Uh, and, and we also look at what the market's demanding for uh, applications and, and features in the software. We have quite a wide range of users of SSP, ranging from installers, specifiers, consultants, uh, OEMs. Uh, we also have university research institutes and, and, and university uh, professors and students using it. So it really is quite a powerful tool that's used by a lot of uh, a lot of different people. We're always updating and improving it. So uh, a really important point to mention is that a lot of the results that you see are not just uh, mathematical models, they're actually based on real test data that we've carried out uh, at SWEP. So the results are very accurate. We've had a lot of independent tests with companies such as AHRI uh, and, and, the, uh, and Bizria. And we've actually found that when a unit is tested in a live situation, the results are very, very close to what was predicted and they almost always pass the test. So it's very encouraging for us that, that the software is so accurate in that sense. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys where you can download the software. So if you just bear with us a moment, make sure you can all see the right screen. Good, there we are. Okay, so for the desktop based version, you go to the SWEP homepage, SSP in the top right hand corner here. We click on install directly to your PC. This link here is for the older version of the web-based system. So I'll just focus for now on the uh, PC version. You need to scroll all the way to the bottom. This often catches people out because they're looking for a, a link up here. So we go all the way down. and then approve and install. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I already have it, but you'll basically go through the process of filling out your details, company name, uh, address, email, contact, and so on. 
uh, you will get a verification email sent to you. So please check your spam, make sure you get that or else you won't get the, uh, the software won't, won't uh, register. Once you've verified, you will be in uh, demo mode on the software. And this gives you a limited range of functionality. So please, often you'll need to contact us to have your software released from demo mode to default, where you'll have the full range of products to choose from and all the different types of applications, single phase uh, and, and, uh, and two phase, condensers, evaporators, and so on. So uh, this is the desktop based version. I'll just click on another link here. So our DThermX is the new web-based version of SSP. So anybody that has restrictions on downloads or maybe you're using a, an Apple Mac, for example, uh, th this will be really good news for you because the functionality is m almost the same as, as the installed version. So it's a really, really nice application. So I'm gonna show you the link that was just there on the news page. You click on this link here. I've already registered, so we have my details already. For anybody that hasn't, and, and, and there might be a few of you, you'll have to register in that case. So you'll come here, fill out your details, accept the license terms, and then you'll go through the procedure. So I'll just go back and show you very briefly DFirmX. So again, anybody that's used SSP uh, installed on a PC, we'll see that the layout is very, very familiar. Uh, currently, we only have single phase and single phase dual. More applications such as evaporators and condensers will be added in the future. Uh, I've been having a play around with it as our colleagues before we launched it on our website, and it really is fantastic. So great news for Mac users and anybody that doesn't have, uh, has restrictions on downloads, for example, on a company network and so on. So that's all from me, guys, for now. I'm going to hand you over to Greg for the live demonstration of SSP G8. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I will share my screen. So just. Uh... OK. There you are, Greg. Yeah. So you should be able to see uh, now SSP. Uh, thank you, Adam, for the SSP G8 introduction and uh, welcome to all attendees. Uh, I will now proceed to a live demonstration of the software. Uh, I will start by presenting available information showing on the home page and then go through a single phase selection. And I will use this selection as a support to go through all different tools and setup that are useful to know when using the software. So let's start with the home page. So on a, on a down uh, on this side, you have all the latest news uh, that are available. Um, you can see that uh, the one we show up here is uh, DTherm X news that Adam just presented. So you can either click on it and get a better description of what it is about. And also, you can read the article down below and direct read the article direct to our website. So as you can see, you click and you go and get direct to the website. On uh, on this corner here, you have uh, access to uh, different case stories, uh, different projects that Swep, Swep have been working on. Uh, the case stories are global case stories, so it's all related to UK. Uh, but you can see that they're all sorted by application. So we got the district energy case stories, residential heating, refrigeration, uh, and so on and so on. Um, if you take uh, an example of district energy, uh, so it's not all the project, but some of the projects that we've been working on, big projects, uh, and you can choose uh, any of them. So we can take for instance, uh, the TV2 Arena project that was done in Stockholm, uh, where SWEP have worked uh, on a 2.6 megawatt uh, cooling uh, system uh, on the stadium. And you can see here some pictures 
of installations um, that have been uh, implemented on this project. So here you got uh, two units in series uh, and four of those in parallel to do the, uh, the capacity. And for instance, here for this project, we saw that the space uh, was an issue. This was the only door uh, that was available to, uh, to do the installation. So this is one example of uh, the uh, applications and uh, I guess today that we have, uh, but they're also all available in our website if you're interested. Uh, down below here, we got uh, the address uh, of the head office. Uh, we got an email address that is a generic email address. And uh, if you send an email to this address, uh, a contact a swap, uh, swap employee will forward it to the, uh, the person that could answer your questions. And now let's go to uh, a demonstration of the system. So we got two ways uh, to go through a calculation. Uh, so you could go to the calculation menu to start with uh, and perform any calculation depending on your applications. If it's single phase for district energy or or a condenser for refrigeration, heat pumps, evaporator, all sorts of liquid evaporator for ORC system. So by going into the calculation menu, you can see on the right hand side, uh, some more details of what uh, the heat exchanger will do. So here's a temperature profile. You see the, the, the cold water coming in at the bottom of the units, coming out, um, uh, at the top of the units, this is on side one and side two. Uh, you get the hot water side, and you can see the temperature profile uh, and the heat transferred inside the heat exchanger. So there are two different modes, uh, the explanation of how a co-current uh, will work, and as well as a co-current. So if you click on all different uh, options, uh, you get all information that are related to the calculation mode. So that's quite interesting. You could also Greg, go by I'm, application. Yes. Greg, I'm sorry, I just have to interrupt you for a second because I just have um, uh, an attendee who says that he can't hear us. So I'm just going to open the microphones for a second just to see if that's yeah. true for everybody. Hi. Everybody should be able to speak now. Can somebody just say something so we know we can you can hear us? I can hear. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So it must be something well. on his own settings then. I can hear. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'll try to fix it and um okay. I will put everybody on mute again. Uh, okay, so you can also go by application. Um, so if I click on application, you see that condenser for heat pump. Uh, same, you've got some uh, some message and tells you uh, what what the selection is for or two stage units. Uh, but you have also uh, some templates available with some example of uh, pre-selected uh, selection, basic pre-selection. Uh, if I take a case of district energy, so you could go to district heating and there are some information about where we heat exchanger is set in district heating mode. Uh, you can take the header station and then uh, go to uh, the selection mode. So when you take this path, You have basically a, a pre-selection done uh, with all the specification that may not or may or may not correspond to the specification that uh, you want, and you can see that there are pre-selected items already uh, corresponding to this capacity. So that would be the the long way to uh, to start a selection. Uh, there's an easier way from the home page. It's just simply to go to uh, the calculation window straight away uh, on single phase, for instance.
So once you're on the on the on the selection mode, you can choose to save your uh, selection. For instance, I've got here when I, I start, I've got the pre-selection done, but I could have, if I take an example, 50 kilowatt, I could save this as uh, the, my my kind of home page, if you if you want. Uh, with all the filters already set. So all you have to do is to save as template. So if I save as template, and if I open a new tab here, yeah, and go to single phase selection, Very good. Uh, it's slow. If I open a new tab, and now I've got the 50 kilowatt instead of the 60 that I have earlier. So you save, you save as you want. You can also uh, save your calculation another way, on different calculation, and just save the calculation into uh, a folder. So you can choose which pass you want to to do it. So here it goes by default to all uh, to all the, the, the folder that have been installed uh, on your computer, uh, but it can be somewhere else. And I can uh, choose uh, to, to call this demo SSPG8 and save it. Yes. And then when you go to the home page, calculation mode, you see here the will save calculation. If you click on that one, this is basically the one I've just saved. And you go straight to the calculation that you saved previously. So it's quite interesting when you've got different projects that you work on. Just put the name of the project and you don't have to type again and again all the specifications. They come straight away. So now I will see, we will see what uh, we have um, in terms of uh, specification and what you need to specify when you want to run uh, a selection. To start with, uh, you need to find what fluids you want. Uh, so you can choose your fluid and type the type of fluid that you want. For instance, if there, are, if there is ethylene glycol uh, that I want to use, you just type uh, the start of ethylene glycol and then choose choose it and you can choose concentration as well by just typing the figure or use the plus and minus button if you want 25 enter okay uh, we all we have already inside system different sorts of uh, fluids so if you type the vg uh, viscosity for oil you got all sorts of different oil and fluids that are already uh, set up in the system. I will perform uh, the demonstration only with water. Go back to water. The other uh, thing that you need to, uh, to set is the type of heat exchanger that you want. Uh, for single phase application, uh, the most common one are the B type and E types. So you can pre-select B types and E type. I will go back to, I forgot to tell you about uh, our product range and I will explain the difference between E type and B type. So the E series here are the type of heat exchanger you find in boilers, uh, district energy heat, interface unit uh, and they don't have a cover plate basically so they can work at a pressure up to 16 bar. The other heat exchanger we have in portfolio so the small series or medium large XL and XXL uh, have cover plate and are also good for uh, refrigeration because they can hold the pressure from 30 to 120 bar, depending on the model. So for district energy, as I'm running uh, a selection, uh, single phase selection, I choose to take the E series as well as the B series. 
So the BC, if you, if you click on the heat exchanger, then you will see that there are a lot of options. Uh, so the E and B series uh, are for B type, are, are more for district energy again, and single phase application. All the other types are specific for refrigeration. Once I've selected the heat exchanger that I'm likely to, to get, um, you need to uh, put the kilowatt load, if you know it, or a flow rate, uh, and the temperature, inlet and outlet temperature on both sides of the uh, system. You can choose either to have a uh, kilowatt load or flow rate. If I put both, you see that there is a problem. Uh, we can't have uh, both uh, data, so the system will tell you that there is a problem and also the maximum pressure drop uh, that is required. Number of paths, uh, you can force it to one path or leave it to nothing, uh, zero. Uh, if you leave it to zero, you're gonna have selections with two, three, four paths uh, that are possible depending on the specification. And Having more than one pass means that uh, you will have connections at the front and the back of the unit. So if it doesn't matter for you to have connection front and back, you can leave this blank. If you, if you really want a heat exchanger that, is, that has only four connections at the front of the unit, then it's better to set it with one pass already. From that, you can start calculate. So you see all sorts of uh, different models and heat exchanger options. Uh, they are different, they will do the job, but uh, some have more or less pressure drop. Uh, some are performing better than others. And here you can see the price factor rating. So the price factor ratings is normally that the one that are at the top of the list are the cheapest units. It's not always true, but uh, for most of the case, uh, you can rely on this. And you can see that uh, the first two items are almost uh, identical in terms of pricing. And when you go down the list, you see that this one is more expensive. It will do the job, but uh, you have to pay a higher price for it. Um, okay, you can see here the, that just by have a, having a quick look, the heat transfer area that each unit have, and uh, you can see that the one in the, in the bottom has much more material than the one at the top, which makes the price higher. You can choose or change all those columns uh, depending on what you want to see. Here we've got the size of the unit, but you can, you can uh, change the column as you want by right click on the column and then change data from one side to another. So that side is what is actually showing on, um, on, on the window. And this side is what is available. So carbon footprint, fluid side one, uh, all, all sorts of uh, data. I'm not gonna go through all of them. So to do this, right click on the colon and then colon. Okay, oops. Uh, also very important to know, you can filter uh, depending on the factory. So we've got different plans. If you want product uh, that show only uh, items that are built in Europe, in EMEA, then you have to unclick the APAC and America's factory. So here, as you can see, I'm selecting only products that are manufactured in or European factory, Sweden and Slovakia. You can filter by material. 
So if copper is not an option for you, you can select or unclick the copper, copper braised item and only looking for selection for copper free items. So all stainless steel or nickel braised. There's also uh, a Minex unit, uh, which is a, a plate heat exchanger with gaskets. So here I will select all models. So every, all the boxes are ticked. I'm not filtering on material. You can filter by pressure, but this is, I think you need to know our project very well to start filtering on this. So at the, at the start, you can, you, you can leave this filter blank. And also, and very interesting, you can filter by products available in our central warehouse. So all the products that are selected are products that we normally keep in our stock. Uh, Central European Warehouse in Germany. So by clicking on EMEA, this only gives you products that are currently in stock or that we currently stock normally in, uh, in our warehouse. It may be that they're not available, but that's a product that we normally keep in stock. So once you've done that, you can see the difference by having the filter on or having no filter at all. So you see that, for instance, here, by removing the filter, the system tells me to get a B85 type unit by 36 plate, but by having the filter on, the system recommends a B85 by 40. This is the cheapest item. I want to go and with this item and I will do a, a demonstration of different tools using this item. So if you want to ignore all other items, you can close the product and just type the item you want. Let's say B85. And calculate and only the option with a B85 unit will show up and ignore all the others. You can uh, print uh, all the data, the specific data, by doing a printout. So the printout is not related to a product reference. It's just tell you about uh, what the heat exchanger and what that model can do. So this is a, a short way to, uh, to get uh, the performance on the data sheet um, of this unit, but you don't have any reference for the unit. If you want to select a proper unit, you go to product selector. And here is the reference that we keep into all stock. So you see, we've got two different models in all stock. Uh, by clicking on the arrow and extending, you see exactly more, more um, information regarding the type of connections that this reference have. So here we've got one hinge connections. The height of the connection is 20 millimeter. The material is uh, stainless steel, 316. And they're threaded connections. You can look at the other one. And here you see that the difference between the two are actually the, here we have what we call a combi connections. So you have you can either screw a one inch um, uh, screw you can even have a one inch screw connection, or also a twenty two solder connection connection, all in one. So let's say I'm interested into this product. Uh, I go to next. Here you got all sorts of different options that are available with this project product. Uh, for the exercise, I will ignore this, um, the, well, all the options and go direct to add to basket. Once you've selected this, we went through those steps, uh, the product will show into your basket here on the left corner. And this is basically what I've just selected. From this window, you can print a uh, article number, uh, a data sheet, but including the article number. 
So on the printout, we'll show all the detail with, regarding the article itself and the connections. It takes a few seconds. Here we go. So here you have on the data sheet, uh, the article number. Oh, there's a bit of a problem here. I don't know what happened. Sorry, I must have done uh, something wrong. And uh, yeah, here we back again. So I go back to my selection. The basket. So and here you can order the drawings. Uh, if you're interested in having the drawing of the selected unit, you click on this and the system will ask you what type of drawing you, you wish to have. So step, so 3D models, uh, or you can also have a BIM object, so a Revit file. So I've already uh, have an example of the type of email you will receive uh, that I will show you. So it starts with receiving an email uh, through that form format where it tells you about how long it will take uh, to get the email. And the second email you receive, uh, sorry. The second email you will receive is with the drawing attached. So PDF drawing as well as uh, 3D model and the Excel file. You got, uh, a separate drawing for the connection. And if you've ordered uh, a BIM object, uh, you receive a third email with this time the RFA file, which corresponds to a Revit file. So on, that, on that BIM object, you have all the parameters uh, that are into your specification. So every, already in the BIM object is showing the kilowatt load um, and all specification that, uh, that uh, you, you, you have done. Okay. So now I will show you what difference, uh, as you can see, you've got different type of selection. You've got the design, performance and rating. So if you're on a design mode, uh, we, we went through this and we we chosen the B85 unit type. Oh, that's already there, sorry. The B85 unit type, and I'm gonna calculate, so this one. And you may want to know what performance this uh, heat exchanger really have. Uh, first of all, you can see that uh, this heat exchanger is showing up some oversurfacing. The oversurfacing means basically that you have um, uh, the heat transfer coefficient that is available is more than the one that is required. So you've got extra capacity in for this heat exchanger. But so by clicking on auto performance, you can see the real temperature you get basically. So here is you ask for 25 degrees, but because you hope the heat exchanger is overperforming, you actually get a lower return temperature and a higher outlet temperature on the side too. So this is a quick way to find out uh, what the heat exchanger will deliver if you keep the same flow rate. Now on the performance mode, you may be interested to actually leave this 
uh, the secondary side, which corresponds to what your customer wants, uh, as it is, and see what actual return temperature you get. So you can add the number of plates and do a calculation. And then you see that you keep, if you keep that 35 degree out, output, you only need 0 0.7 uh, liter uh, or kilogram per second flow, flow rate on that side. And your return temperature will be lower than expected. Because when we did the design, we had 25. On the rating mode, here you choose to have, for instance, 22. That's your target. You've already pre-selected the heat exchanger. And with 22, you see that you got the minus of the surfacing. So the heat transfer coefficient that you currently have is not enough to cover what is required. So you, it tells you that you need to increase the outlet temperature in order for the heat exchanger to be able to actually fulfill the requirement. So Now I go back to uh, performance and I would like to show you the multi-calc function, which is very interested, uh, interesting if you have, if you want to see how the heat exchanger that you pre-selected, how it performs in different conditions. So all you have to do here is to click on the export to multi-calc and calculate. So as you see, all those, this line is corresponding to what you have specified. Calculation is finished. So you want to send the result to an Excel uh, file that you predefined. I can use this one for the test. Save it. It's already existing. Do you want to place it? Yes. Do you want to open and save the result? Yes. And it will open an Excel file with all the data that all the inputs that you have. So on the first sheet, you have the in data, so the data that you put in the system. The second sheet is a calculation. So you can see here it's showing up the outlet temperature on side one that we left blank. Now what you maybe want to do is to perform a very quick calculation for all different case scenarios. So you can copy one line and paste. So we have got all the same uh, input, but you could choose to change a kilowatt load, 10, 15, 20, and then scroll it down. And you can copy this new uh, specification or requirement for the system. Copy. Close your spreadsheet. Don't have to save it. And then just click on the left hand side of the multi calc window. You should, it, should, should see it's a uh, it, uh, change color and control. V and all the data that I imported from the Excel sheet is showing up now and I can calculate and the system perform in one click basically all the calculation that you don't have to do manually. So you can see that is uh, is ticking and the calculation is now done so you can reopen your table, your Excel sheet. Your in data hasn't changed and your out data is all the calculations that you just done in one click basically. So from that, you're on Excel, you can build any graph you want. Uh, yeah, I'll change the kilowatt load, but you can choose to change the mass flow. You can choose to change pressure drop. So you can see here, we start at 10 kilowatts, ending up at 90 kilowatts for the same heat exchanger, B80 by 40. And uh, you can also see here the pressure drop uh, that start really low and end up to be 56 kPa. 
So you, there's an unlimited, really, uh, amount of calculation that you, you can do through this multi-calc and very quickly with, with uh, a specific item uh, on performance. You can also do it in design mode with uh, a specification uh, that you choose. And in design mode, it will change basically the number of plates uh, for this specific unit uh, and adapt the number of plates depending on the kilowatt load that is required. So that's a really, really interesting tool. Uh, just also, I would like to show you how to get the property of the fluid. So you can right click on the fluid and then you can check by on the fluid property all the data that are used to run the calculation. So you got temperature, density, heat capacity, conductivity and viscosity change depend depending on the, um, on, on the temperature. And you can easily see if, if it makes sense for you. And it's good as well for uh, when we're using uh, another type of fluid, like if I take uh, a refrigeration fluid, for instance, uh, here it's CO2, uh, let's put it to 20 bar, and you can do the same by looking at the free property. At 20 bar, you got the latent heat critical pressure and all information related to this specific fluid. Another thing I want to show you as well is uh, sometimes we have some requests about uh, pressure drop. So what pressure drop would I have uh, if I use this unit and use a certain uh, flow rate? So here you can do it very easily by clicking on this pressure drop tool. So all you have to do is to select the unit uh, that you want. So I'm going to take the B85 again. So B85, this is the one. Uh, the fluid is water, uh, number of parts one. Uh, number of channels. So the number of channel here, I've got uh, B85 by 40. So if I look at the primary side, the number of channel is a number of play divided by two minus one. So 19. And the reference temperature is medium temperature that you, you have. I, I, I set it to 25 degree uh, for water. There's not much uh, difference. You can choose to change uh, if you're more confident with uh, liter per minute uh, if it means better for you or you can change the unit as well on the pressure side uh, and here all you have to do is to type what pressure drop you, you want so let's say I want 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 and calculate so the system is telling me basically uh, for this particular unit on that particular side that uh, the flow rate uh, I can allow to get a 10 kPa pressure drop is 33.1 liter per minute. So that gives you the performance. You can print a report. And you get the report through this format that you can save on the PDF file. Another tool that could be interesting um, is a CIP check. So whether or not you, you, you should um, clean or not clean your uh, heat exchanger. So I'm just going to put some uh, random uh, value. 30, 60, 70. 80, 90, and I will guess uh, the pressure drop. 10, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, and uh, 60, and calculate the chart. 
So obviously, this data, I, I, I've just uh, guessed them. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. But what you can see that if you have measured a pressure drop that is not corresponding to the nominal pressure drop that you should have, you got a red um, mark uh, on a dot that tells you that uh, you're above the limit of what you should have, and then it's required to clean the unit. If the figures were actually right, you probably would have red dot all over the, the line. So that's an interesting tool to know when you need to maintain your heat exchanger. On a, heat ex on, on a system, you can also uh, create your own fluids, so by with a fluid editor. Uh, so we recommend to be very careful with this. Uh, this becomes then your own fluid, uh, but by setting the temperature, create a new name of the fluid, you would need at least four, uh, three, three to five points uh, in order to get a kind of accurate um, calculation. But this is the kind of thing we can do for you as well. So don't hesitate to come back to us. And just a few, uh, to, to finish, uh, just uh, a, a few words on how to, your, your settings. So we saw that uh, you have the colon option for setting. Uh, this is the column option, option for the selection window, as we saw earlier, but you can do the column option for the multi that we've done previously. So you can remove uh, a few of those uh, parameters if you feel they are unnecessary for you to, to have, or you can add some as well on the other side. On the colon uh, option, you can work on single phase, but you have obviously different data depending if it's a condenser, evaporator. So you choose uh, the colon setting for each different uh, selection mode, either on the multi-calc or on your window, selection window. Or the setting that you, you, you can do is the, the printout. You can choose where to store your printout. Uh, so by default, it goes to uh, the SSP document. But you can choose your path, basically. You can uh, choose where you want to store automatically your document, your printout. You can choose where to store your uh, multi-calc and calculation and general options. Uh, you can choose if you want to work uh, metric or the US uh, units and the language, very important as well. So we've got all, uh, all the language available here. I think uh, I don't want to take too too much uh, of your time. And Adam, I don't know if uh, if you have any questions. Uh, we we wanted to save some time for for questions. We got ten minutes left, so sure. Thanks, Greg. That was really questions. fantastic. Uh, we we do have a couple of questions. So if I leave you in control, and I'll I'll read out these questions, and yes, maybe you navigate to the area uh, mm -hmm. to, to show the guys. So we have one. Uh, 